everybody, and welcome to another segment of Accounting and Balances How Do I series. In this segment, we get to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that is cash flow from operations. Specifically, we get to talk about how do I adjust cash flow from operations for non cash items. Now, for most people, dealing with cash flows is the most exciting or challenging, depending on how you want to say it, part of building the financial statements. Why? Because the typical style, the indirect method of creating a statement of cash flows is not as intuitive as the other pieces of the statement of cash flows. Let's take a look at what I mean. When I look down here in the investing and financing sections of my statement of cash flows, the line items are really intuitive. Cash received from sale of equipment, cash paid for dividends. Those are really easy to understand. I know exactly what the company has spent money on. Up in the cash flow from operations section, however, it's a little bit less intuitive. And the reason that it's less intuitive is that we don't show specific cash flows like cash paid for inventory or cash received from customers or cash received as rent. Instead, we start with net income and we make a bunch of adjustments like the ones you can see here for our changes in working capital and turn net income into cash flow from operations. And while that provides a lot of information about accrual accounting, it isn't as easy to understand or interpret as the line items further down in our statement of cash flows, which means some of us get stuck when we're trying to deal with these adjustments and either put them into our financial statements or understand what they mean when we're trying to interpret the financial statements and specifically the statement of cash flows. To discuss the whole cash flow from operations section is two or three days worth of lecture in an accounting class. So we're not going to try to do that. Instead, I just want to focus on one specific part of what goes into our cash flow from operations. And those are the non-cash items. For example, depreciation and amortization are methods of assigning costs for buying PP&E and using it over a certain number of years. The cash flow happened back when I bought the PP&E. It doesn't happen each and every period, which means that depreciation and amortization is a non-cash item. And the easiest way to think about this is actually to draw a little graph. So I'm going to try to do that here in Excel. We're going to start with net income and convert it into cash flow from operations. So I'm going to start by looking at the net income effect of my item. In this case, that's $11,000 and it's a negative, it's an expense. So net income is going to go down by $11,000. But how much cash did I pay? Well, we just talked about that. We bought the equipment in a previous period and it would have looked like cash paid for new equipment, negative $48,000. That's the cash effect of buying PP&E. Depreciation has no cash effect. So my cash flow from depreciation is zero. The question I've got then in making my adjustment is how do I go from negative 11,000 to zero? And when I'm teaching this in class, I always have students that get stuck there. They, they're trying to think really, really deep and figure out, wait, what, what happened? What's going on? I, I, don't, I don't know what really happened there. I, I, I can't see it. Don't make this harder than it is. To go from negative 11,000 to zero, I would need to add $11,000. So I'm going to make a line item adjustment in cash flow from operations. And usually with these non-cash items, we simply label it the same thing that we see in the income statement. Let's take a look at another example. I'm going to leave my little graph here. And the next item that I see that's a non-cash item is actually this loss on sale of PP&E. Now, people will stop right there and say, wait a minute, Jason, if you sold PP&E, there's cash there. There is cash there, but there's not cash flow from operations there. The sale of PP&E goes down here in investing activities. If that's my $4,000 down here in investing activities, then there's no cash left to go in cash flow from operations because all of that cash flow is already being recorded down in investing activities. But in this net income number, I have this $4,000 loss, which dropped my net income. And 
if you don't make any adjustment, it looks like that was actually cash, meaning that you sold it for $4,000, you spent $4,000, so the net cash effect was zero. But that's not what happened. The reality is we gained $4,000. So I need in cash flow from operations to get that 4,000 out of there and get to zero. So I show nothing cash flow from operations and show the positive 4,000 down here in my investing activities. And again, I'm going to call that the same thing that I saw in my income state. Now, these are the most intuitive of our adjustments. And nine times out of 10, matter of fact, nine and a half times out of 10, anytime you see depreciation, amortization, gains or losses, you're going to make an adjustment much like this one, where I realize that the real cash effect is down in investing or financing. I don't want any cash effect in cash flow from operations. But those aren't the only income statement adjustments that I have to deal with when I'm building a cash flow from operations section of my statement of cash flows. I also have to deal with instances where cash is not zero, it's just different from what I see in my net income. So let's take a look at an example of something like that. And the example that we're going to use is our pension expense. And we can see up here in our income statement, they showed pension expense of $10,000. So let's draw that in here. Negative $10,000. But that's a non-cash amount because the cash is not what I show for my pension worksheet. It's the amount I actually paid into the pension so that I'm saving for my employees to retire. And that number is given down here. It says that we contributed $30,000 to employee pensions during the year. So my non-cash item is this negative 10,000. The real cash effect is a negative 30. I actually paid out $30,000. So again, I need to make an adjustment, not because there's no cash at all, but because the cash is different than the expense or the accrual. So to get from negative 10,000 to negative 30,000, I would need to subtract an additional $20,000. This 10,000 is already part of this 14,500. Now I'm going to do an additional adjustment for $20,000 to get a net effect or a total cash effect of $30,000 contributed to my pension. When we cancel out a non-cash effect, meaning there was an accrual value and the cash effect was zero, I usually name it the exact same thing as I put in my income statement. When I do something like this, where I'm making an additional adjustment, meaning some of the accrual was cash, I just had to either add to it or subtract from it to get to the real cash. I usually don't call it the same thing that I had in my income statement, but I call it something close. In this case, I'm gonna call it pension contributions. And I'm gonna subtract $20,000. And that's how we adjust cash flow from operations for non-cash items. It's really a simple process if you'll let yourself just draw it out. I know it seems really simple, but let yourself use that tool because it will work for simple adjustments like the ones we did this in this video. And it will also work for more advanced transactions like adjusting for the amortization of a bond premium or discount. One way or another, it always works. And hopefully this method will really help you both to make the adjustments and also to understand what's going on in that cash flow adjustments section. And of course, we've got more fun topics to come in our How Do I series in future videos. We'll see you then. Thanks.